very good afternoon to one and all present here very good afternoon and i'm very very happy to see you all after a very long gap right so after the portion completed so this is our first revision session and which you all are aware of it correct yes and by this time you know what we learning is right and we learning is an online education platform where we give quality education for all students like you correct yes kids i hope like all who you are watching there are uh, like great 10 great 10 students belonging to both cbse and state syllabus right so whatever science we are following here whatever chapter we are following it's for you both for cbse also and state syllabus also is that clear and as your exams are nearing so it is going to approach in the month of march correct i guess like timetable also will be released by this time which you will be like somewhat tensed this is the first time you are going to face your grade 10 exams correct are you in that tensed mode don't worry because it's very very easy right only the first exam you will be you'll be feeling a lot of nervous things will be there a lot of tension will be there but it's all fine if you have uh, the content knowledge if you are very very strong enough in your con content and the way you write present and everything then everything is going to be really very very easy for you is it clear and for your content to be very strong or you have to be like strong in your content as i said what are you supposed to do very simple you just have to sit and watch all our sessions correct if you just have to go back and uh, listen to all the classes that we were uh, uh, teaching before right whether it is science or math or english or social or whatever it is just go through our session again and again which will definitely help you and in order to make you easy also instead of you sitting and watching into all the other live sessions so this one series we have brought which we say this to be one shot revision session where the entire chapter will be covered and as the name says like it's a one shot revision of course it's going to be fast but not that jet fast is that clear so we'll be fast where we'll cover each and everything from the chapter all the topics subtopics all the important definitions concepts diagrams everything we'll be discussing here but we'll be doing it one uh, one complete flow so that it will help you also correct you just don't uh, you just have to look into the session take notes have your pen paper your textbook also you can have side by because some extra points we'll be discussing here which might not be there in your textbook but the teacher would have told you in the classes so some extra points will be there like that so just make uh, sure that you have your textbooks with you or if you don't have your textbook it's fine that if you have your notebooks where you usually take notes is it clear if you all set uh, ready then we'll just start with our revision sessions shall we start mm -hmm. give me one thumbs up so i'll also have my live chat box aside so that i'll be keep looking at your comments and if you have any doubts in the session you can very well ask me i'll just look into it and for detailed notes if you want like uh, you have the textbook you have got notes from your school but some extra notes you want very well you are welcome to our please welcome to the application which we have launched recently which says we hyphen learning dot in all right just log into this website you will be getting all the study notes you will get ppts you will get this lecture whatever lecture we are discussing and this in the notes form you will be getting which will really help you all right and as your exams are nearing as i said it will really really help you in this particular point of time shall we just start shall we just proceed cool okay so as always uh, in biology you know very well like i'm your biology teacher right we we are discussing all the six chapters in biology this is your first chapter life processes which is really a very very important chapter all right and in exam point of view i would like to tell around or four points to you okay before you um, like when you are preparing for your exams first thing is like whatever chapter you have studied so far go through the entire chapter and as you are going through the entire chapter make small small notes if you have the post its or sticky notes if you are making some small small uh, important points and sticking it on the page then and there it will really help because when you are keep on revising no what will happen is like those highlighted points will register in your mind very easily okay so when you are writing your exam when you just try to recall instead of the entire paragraph these highlighted points will come to your mind so either take a small paper or if you are using your sticky notes it will be very well and good so they write mention all the important points for that particular topic for example in life processes we are discussing about respiration let's say 
in respiration what all important points will be you have to write it down you have to write about the diagram you just have to write about the lungs about the trachea about alveoli especially and all those points alone write it in the sticky notes and paste it upon the uh, in that particular page where the respiration comes so like that if you keep doing for each and every topic no? so those highlighted alone will register in your mind so this will be the first point that i would like to tell and then so or we can say like in one line let me say make flashcards for important topics all right so that will be my first point so second i'll say if let's say like your exam is coming or it's on tomorrow all right what will you do when should you start the preparation hmm? tonight no you should have started your preparation well in advance at least a week advance you should start your preparation in your schools they'll normally one month advance they'll do so basically we are also doing the same way one month advance we are starting the revision so that is how you also should start the revision daily on early mornings if you wake up and read it will register in your mind instead of uh, sitting late nights waking the entire night like owls and if you are sitting and reading it, your brain will get tired you will get tired you cannot concentrate on your exam the three hours exam you cannot sit and write all right so avoid night uh, study at night instead you just have to wake up early in the morning and you have to study is that clear so first point as i said like make flashcards the second point i'll say like try to avoid study at night third i'll say like make keep a make a plan and keep a goal what plan you will have okay in today i'll study biology i'll study mathematics i'll study this one from this time to that time um, like that you just have to have a plan and you just have to have a have a goal also like that okay in the end of the day so so chapters or so so topics in the chapters i'll cover like that you just have to bifurcate among uh, yourself all right so one <coughs> excuse me one plan for one student might be same for the other student or it might not be same okay so you have your own plan because you know about yourself very well right so you sit and work out your own plan and keep your own goal okay and uh, um timing how much you are going to sit and study one hour i'm going to sit and study like anything one hour complete i don't sit and study have break in the middle half an hour or you are capacity i'm mean, like you are very well confident on you that one hour you can concentrate and study without any diversion okay go ahead with one hour but always have breaks in the middle five minutes break 10 minutes break eat something healthy drink something healthy keep yourself healthy especially in this uh, time because your exams are there only one time you'll write your 10 standard exams in this time if you are uh, if you are sick you cannot cope up so your body body should be healthy your mind also should be healthy so you have to eat right foods at this time is it clear so eat right foods and also you maintain your time duration five minutes ten minutes break you take and again you start studying is that clear so these are the four points which i really wanted to share with you and now we'll start with the lesson okay so life processes as i said one of the most interesting chapter all right because this is where we'll be studying how is the life functioning in an organism so no how is life especially i mean i mean it's functioning in our in our or how is the organism still alive because of some processes that is happening inside us which we are aware of some which we are not even aware of clear so this chapter is what we were discussing in our um, in my nine sessions actually we took to discuss this uh, entire chapter right okay now okay yes so first tell me what is life processes what does that word mean to you yes come on i'm just looking at your chat okay is that clear okay fine yes i got my pen yes so what is life processes come on quick very simple okay the processes that are required to maintain the bodily functions and are required for the survival of an organism you call that to be a life processes so what are those uh, or uh, what are those functions that normally keeps an organism alive there are several functions is functions which we already discussed right i'll tell you like what are those functions now basically we just have to yeah if you have uh, made a note of this definition it will be well and good if not take a screenshot or write every time i'll just recommend you to write down only because in grade 10 your handwriting is very very important and if you have a good written practice you will avoid spelling errors and you will pick up the speed so all these factors are depend uh, i mean like are interrelated right so always have do have a written practice okay so now let's start 
the process that are required for maintaining the bodily functions and are required for the survival of an organism are called as life processes even if one uh, process functions i mean like malfunctions obviously it is going to be fatal which means like the organism cannot sustain life so in that aspect first thing we'll just start with this nutrition respiration transportation and excretion is that clear so the first thing nutrition so what is nutrition the process by which the organism consumes food why does it consume food because it wants energy right ultimately our main motive is to produce energy so only with energy an organism can survive is that clear how is the energy produced is it produced in the first process of nutrition no it is not produced in the first process of nutrition it is produced in respiration so nutrition and respiration go hand in hand same equation only it will actually follow some interrelations uh, like one time one will be the product the other time the other will be the product like that it will be right we will be discussing about one by one don't worry but now I am just giving you an overview. So nutrition and respiration go hand in hand without nutrition respiration process cannot happen and again without respiration process there is no use for this alright and then transportation energy is produced by this two process somewhere okay so that energy has to be transported all over the body correct we are eating a food. So, by through the food, we are getting some energy. So, that particular, uh, all the energy supplements has to be supplied the entire process. Sorry, the entire organism. How is it moving from one place to another place? Of course, we need some mechanism, right? So, that mechanism, you say that to be this transportation, okay? In animals, it is of different transportation that is happening. In plants, that is completely different. We'll discuss. And now, when something is prepared, obviously, some wastage will be there. Some, ut some will utilize, some will throw it off. So, like that, we have some wastage which will go out of the body, which has to go out of the body. And that uh, process, you call this to be excretion. You may wonder again, why is reproduction not coming under this? Reproduction comes. It is also an essential process, to, uh, like, essential process for life. But it is not an essential process for, the sus for sustaining life. Is it clear? If reproduction is not happening, the organism can very well survive. But if excretion is not happening or transportation is not happening, let's say respiration is not happening, the organism will lose its life. Is it clear? So all these four processes are very, very important for the survival of an organism and also for the functioning of an organism. Is it clear? Fine. Let's move now. Okay. Nutrition. Starting with nutrition. Nutrition. Very, very important. Just make a note of this definition. Okay. Nutrition is a process by which organism takes food, utilizes to get energy for what? Growth. It has to grow. It uh, The lot of cells will be there. So, for that we need repair and well maintenance should be there. Correct? So, these are the three main factors. Why does the nutrition take place? A nutrition is a process by which an organism takes food, utilizes to get energy for growth, repair and maintenance. Is that clear? And also for excreting the waste materials from the body. So, this is the definition for nutrition. Please make a note. Done? Once done, I'll check. I'll just move. Hmm? Clear. So, next. This nutrition, we can divide them into two modes. Autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition. So, what is autotrophic nutrition? These are the two subdivisions. Let's say like this is one and this is two. Autotrophic. First, let's discuss about this. Autotrophic means what? automatically it happens autopilot we say auto generation we say auto is something which is happening just like that and what is trophic trophic is we can say like synthesize or nourishing or we can say like producing we can say anything like that here we are talking about nourishment uh, like the way how the food is produced okay nutrition is something which basically depends on food right so how is the food produced Automatically it is produced or it is got from something else or somewhere else. So that is what it discusses here. First, autotrophic nutrition. So when we are talking about autotrophic nutrition, the first thing that comes to our mind is this plant. Yes or no? Because plants are uh, the organism which has the capacity to produce their food on their own. Is it clear? So how are the plants producing food? Hmm? Automatically they produce. What are they using? Inorganic substances they use. What are the inorganic substances? Keep thinking. What are the inorganic substances? <coughs> Children, if you feel like I am very, very fast, 
please tell me but again this is revision session right we have to complete the entire chapter so that is why it is a bit fast because we are revising the important concepts and also like all the topics that is present in the chapter is it clear for elaborate detailed section we have made different videos for that you just have to come back watch our video okay what is water traffic nutrition let me watch more come back to the video uh, the links will be given in the playlist if you just scroll down you will have a lot of uh, the videos which we have already discussed i mean okay so there you just have to go click and we will find a detailed lecture of it here this is also detailed only but it is not like uh, i'm not using a lot of time and putting or explaining the one topic okay all right so yes nutrition in which okay nutrition in which organism prepare their own food from the inorganic raw materials as i said like what are the inorganic raw materials like carbon dioxide and water is called as autotrophic nutrition so why do we say it as inorganic because they are abiotic factors so this co2 plus water is a abiotic factor right they are not living they are not biotic they are completely abiotic and again it is like inorganic substances clear they are not plants they are not animals they don't have life but it, they are elements actually they are molecules they're like that we can say right so autotrophic nutrition is where the plant has the capacity to produce their own food so how do they produce their own food they consume they utilize this inorganic substances carbon dioxide they'll take and water they'll take in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll that we shouldn't forget okay so in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll they prepare a food what is it food hmm? what is it food let me change the pen color because i'm having weight oh okay so now tell me okay tell me like what is the process the process by which a plant produces its own food very simple process interesting process also it is called as photosynthesis correct so yes photosynthesis photo you know photo means light correct synthesis you know producing in the presence of light it produces in the absence of light it cannot produce okay so now how is this excuse me excuse me so where is this protection happening it is completely happening in the chloroplast chloro blast correct so where is the chloroplast present it is especially present in the leaves not only in the leaves though all the plants i mean like all the parts of a plant which is green in color this chloroplast is present for example in the young stems young stem of a plant is also green grass is also green correct so if a very small shoot comes that shoot is also green and once it is getting matured this particular stem it will become a hard woody structure right so before it is becoming a hard woody structure it is going to prepare the food or or it is going to contain the chloroplast and chloroplast again it has a green color pigment which we call that to be chlorophyll which has a capacity to trap the solar energy and convert it into a chemical energy is it clear yes so now tell me photosynthesis as we are talking about this is a process by which a uh, plant produces the energy and now let's write the equation for it is it clear so as i said before carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll it produces a substance you call that to be glucose so what is the formula for glucose yes very simple it is c6 h12o6 plus it releases okay it is hidden in my head okay now i'll write it here carbon dioxide plus water correct in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll what will happen c6h12o6 C6H12O6 very very simple very very easy also to remember this glucose okay so along with that what will happen it will it will oh, sorry it will liberate oxygen is it clear and along with oxygen it will produce energy also is it clear it actually requires energy to make all these things is it clear okay so now just look at this reaction so here if you find you will have this 6 you will have this 12 why is this why is this number coming here simple just to balance the equation that's all okay for balancing sake see here in uh, biology this is a one of one equation which is a very very important equation and uh, along with this you have some equations in respiration also which is really important we'll discuss about that also don't worry okay so some simple easy equations only you have in biology which you have to have in mind please remember this glucose c6h12o6 which is very very easy to remember is that clear 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 shall we move 
okay so carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll it produces glucose it uh, liberates oxygen it also has water this water escapes in the by the process called transpiration which you know correct i'll discuss about transpiration don't worry so now so this particular process of photosynthesis where it is happening of course you know very well it is happening in the chloroplast okay so now just look at this cross section of the leaf so what is a cross section of a leaf very simple you are just taking the leaf like this you are cutting it like this so that only we say that to be a cs of a leaf or cross section of a leaf so here when you see the this is the top part which is a waxy cuticle waxy cuticle is nothing but where if you just keep a water drop on the top of the leaf it will not absorb either the water will just like that it will drop down how is it dropping down because of the waxy cuticle only or the waxy layer which prevents the absorption of water if leaf is having a waxy cuticle and the absorption of water is not happening from where is the water coming of course it is coming from the roots from the roots how is it traveling all the way to this leaf this area can you see this area the midrib area yes so where you, it has been marked as xylem right so xylem is a, a conducting tissue which conducts the water from the roots to all the parts of the plant and it actually ends in the leaf only why because for the preparation of food is that clear clear correct <coughs> So now here if you just come to the next layer here below the waxy cuticle you will have this uh, section or arrangement of cells. So this arrangement of cells you call that to be epidermis. Epidermis we can also say normal the skin the outer covering of the cell no you say that to be epidermis upper epidermis and below that you have all the arrangement of plant cells and here you can see the chloroplast okay. So chloroplast is the only cell which is green in color if you normally look into a leaf like this let's say and we will say like this is a or yeah this is a cell and inside it you have the chloroplast let's say okay it is like this so only the chloroplast will be green in color so other area it will be transparent since uh, the chloroplasts are more in number and it is arranged closely together from far when we see it is looking green the leaf is actually looking green but again the leaf is appearing to us as green because it is absorbing only the red rays and the uh, blue rays of the ultraviolet spectrum and it is reflecting the green light and that is why it is appearing green so these things you know very well right so yes and this chloroplast and you also have this air spaces and here you have this guard cell correct so in this equation we saw this water so how is the water entering water is entering through the xylem cells which is present here you can see the midrib right so normally when you draw a leaf like this you will have a midrib and then you will have all these veins so here where the water travels and it just flows through all the way and here also it will have a lot of branches just like our body it will have all the branches so through where the water gets conducted and now when you see here this uh, carbon dioxide is also there right so this carbon dioxide how is it entering the plant so through this way guard cells you know what are guard cells right what are guard cells yes what are guard cells Simple cells, see it is just like our nose only, it helps in the respiration in the particular plant, correct, it helps like, uh, see here, it is in an open state, so this is open, this is closed, why it is open and closed, because here, this guard cells will become turbid by absorbing the water, as it is absorbing the water, it will become puff, puffed up, it will become turbid, so that here, it in the end alone, it will get attached and it will become a, it will compress like this, which naturally creates a pore inside okay so through this stomatal pore only exchange of gas happens and transpiration the water vapor also escapes out through this pore only and when water is moving out of this guard cells outside let's say then again it will lose its turbidity and it will become like this which will automatically close the stomatal pore is that clear is it clear about the guard cells so this is a specialized cells actually which completely which is actually present below the or in the lower surface of the leaf here only it will be present and it helps in respiration it helps in transpiration also so this is how the air is entering into the or the carbon dioxide during the photosynthesis process it is entering into the leaf is that clear 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 good so now let's discuss the what are the events normally it will occur during this photosynthesis hmm? first one absorption of light energy by the chlorophyll <coughs> first process is like as soon as the sun raises the leaves are the plants are there only sun raises right 
So as it is rising, as the sunlight comes, the first thing what it will do is like it will absorb the light energy. Okay. And here, see here, where is it? This chloroplast, they are not stationary. They will be keep on moving. Because too much when they are exposed to too much of sunlight, what will happen is like it will, it cannot bear. It will die because of too much of excess of uh, heat and light, it will die. So what will happen? This chloroplast will be keep on moving. They will be in random motion. Have that also in mind. Okay. So absorption of light energy by chlorophyll happens. Next, conversion of light energy into chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen takes place. Is that clear? So conversion of light energy into chemical energy. So where is it happening? It is happening in the chloroplasts. Is that clear? Clear. And then splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. So normally, you know, this is a water. So this water molecule will split up. Okay. So it will split up into two. Is it clear? So when it is splitting up again, it will become hydrogen separately. It will become and then this oxygen will become separate. Is it clear? Yes. So then reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates will happen. So carbon dioxide, it enters into the plant and when it is combining with the water there, it will produce this glucose. Is that clear? So these are the three main points that happens. First, absorption of light energy by the chlorophyll. Second, conversion of light energy into chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. And then uh, reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates happens. Is that clear? Shall we proceed? Hmm. So this is all about the autotrophic nutrition, normal photosynthetic process. Here you just have to recall about this guard cells which is really important. You might, uh, they, the question might arise like what are guard cells in 2 marks or 3 marks something like that. If any question comes in 5 marks let's say, you have to draw a diagram. Is it clear? If uh, a question is coming on photosynthesis let's say, the CS of a leaf which you saw now and this guard cells. So that one you just have to write, I mean like draw a diagram. If uh, respiration happens, of course, you should draw the respiration of uh, human, respiration in human. Again, the human respiration diagram you should draw. So, have this in mind. So, if a question arises for 5 marks, then especially, sorry, 5 marks, then you have to draw a diagram. Is it clear? At least draw a small diagram, mark 2 points. Is that clear? Hmm. Good. So, next Yes, now uh, the second uh, division of nutrition, which is the heterotrophic nutrition, we'll discuss now, okay? So, what is heterotrophic nutrition? Heterotrophic nutrition is a mode of nutrition in which organism depends on other organisms for food requirements because they don't have the capacity to produce their own food. So, they're completely dependent on other organism. I am a heterotrophic organism. You are a heterotrophic organism. Is it clear? So, here we have three different subdivisions in it, starting with this parasitic. <coughs> saprophytic holozoic you would have heard about the saprophytic parasitic holozoic right yeah we'll just uh, go through it okay saprophytic nutrition one good example is this fungi what you're looking here okay so fungi mushrooms whatever we eat the mushroom that we eat okay so they all are saprophytes so why do we call them to be saprophyte see in saprophytic mode of nutrition the organism will actually secrete the digestive juices on the food so, if let's say like this is a mushroom, okay, so it is grown on a wood, let's say, okay. So, digestive juices are secreted on the food. So, this wood stuff is its food, right? So, here it will first secrete the enzyme and then here the digestion will happen outside the body of the organism. Is it clear? So, after the digestion is happening, then it will suck it in. Hmm? Is it clear? So that is why this is called as a saprophytic mode of nutrition where in which the digestion is happening outside the body of our organism. It will directly give the digestive enzymes or apply the digestive enzymes on the foodstuff. There the digestion will happen, then it will consume it or then it will ingest it. Is it clear? One good example is fungi. Next, parasites. So parasitic nutrition, the organism which lives either like two options they have. Either they live inside the organism or they live outside the organism. Okay. So, the organism in which it lives inside or lives outside, you call it to be a host. Okay. And this organism, you normally call that to be parasites only. Okay. And derives a nutrition from its or derives its nutrition. And those are called as the parasitic, uh, uh, parasitic nutrition or parasitic organisms, parasites. Is that clear? Clear? So, now here, what is the mode of uh, how do they consume now? 
very simple see listen these parasites especially what they do is like they'll directly sit on the host and from the host they'll take the nutrition which is already prepared they'll not sit and eat the food what the organism is eating after the food is eaten after circle i mean like after during the process of assimilation or during the exact process of transportation when the entire food is converted into energy that energy is getting transported in the body from there they'll take for example you take this mosquito this mosquito will not eat our food it will eat our blood what is blood our blood is a transporting factor which transports the energy it transports the nutrition that we eat it transports the oxygen right so from there it will directly take the blood only which is a ready made food for them so these parasites will consume their ready made food which is been prepared for them by the host is that clear hmm? cool next holozoic mode of nutrition this is a very vast 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 very very big okay see listen because it will undergo all these five steps starting with this ingestion where we eat digestion breaking down of food absorption the broken down food should be absorbed right assimilation where it is sent to all the parts of the body ejection where the waste is ejected out clear clear when we are going deep one by one then it is fast but just have this in mind for example if you are getting this marks in two marks let's say follow the right mode of nutrition you just have to write all these five steps is it clear ingestion digestion absorption assimilation ejection starting with the ingestion ingestion is a process by which an organism takes the food into its body and then digestion is where it gets broken down absorption is where getting absorbed assimilation is a process where it is getting assimilated to or passed on to all the parts of the body last ejection waste is getting expelled outside the body is it clear <clears throat> excuse me please don't mind if i drink water sorry for that okay <clears throat> clear we'll just move on hmm amoeba what is basically amoeba water body sorry water brown organism okay it's a single cell organism and one specialty is a eukaryotic organism and this follows all these five steps is it clear it has a well defined nucleus ah huh? so with that well defined nucleus it performs various functions okay that single cell itself performs all the functions let's say digestion happens respiration happens excretion happens and reproduction also happens in the amoeba all right so now we'll just discuss how is this re um, this, um, what is this holozoic mode of nutrition happens in amoeba okay let's say this is a food particle i'll change my pen color hmm. now can you see the food particle yeah so this is a food particle so as soon as the amoeba sends the food let's say this is the paramecium okay paramecium is something which is very very smaller than the amoeba so as soon as it is sensing the food uh, stuff what it will do is like it will protrude its uh, cell membrane it has a cell membrane right so this cell membrane it will protrude so that protrusion you call that to be a pseudopodia correct so this pseudopodia will come it will envelop the food correct yes so here see the pseudopodia it is coming out it is trying to encircle the food like this is it clear so the third step here see this pseudopodia is far it's just enveloping it enclosing the food okay and when it is enclosing a uh, food like that a uh, 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 area it has been created a region is created correct so that particular region see for example your hands amoeba doesn't have hands like this let's say like this it is so here the region is created like this it is created right so that region becomes a vacuole there so that vacuole since food is inside it you say that to be a food vacuole so inside the food vacuole what it will do it will start sending its digestive enzymes on the food from the cell it will just pass on so how is it passing very simple osmosis only okay we'll discuss what is osmosis also don't worry so now the digestive enzymes are acting on the food particle so as soon as the digestive enzymes are acting on the food particle what will happen the food particle will start breaking down so after it is breaking down what will happen it will break down and it will get absorbed in this particular area so once here slowly after breakdown it will start getting absorbed as soon as it is getting absorbed that particular energy will get passed on to all the cell sorry to the entire cell because only one cell is there so the entire cell it gets passed and this waste stage will slowly it will come out and it will be pushed out 
okay so now the energy is also there the wastage will be expelled outside the body of an amoeba is it clear so ingestion is happening where the food particle is covering breakdown is happening where digestion is happening absorption is happening here where the energy from the food particle is absorbed assimilation is happening where it is traveling to all the parts of the cell so here in one single cell what parts you will have you will have mitochondria you will have golgi bodies you will have endoplasmic reticulum cytoplasm food vacuum a lot of other parts are there right so to all the other parts it will start assimilating and then at last digestion happens is that clear very simple right so now we'll see the nutrition same nutrition that is happening in a human being also so human being it undergoes a various of stages amoeba it is just a single cell where the digestion process was nutrition process was very very simple right but in human being it is not like that different organs combine together to perform this particular function so this entire system what do you call this system this nutrition in human being you call this to be digestive system correct so digestive system to frame this particular digestive system you need different different organs because different organs group together to form digestive system or become to form an organ system right so here you have a uh, buccal cavity esophagus you have stomach you have small intestine large intestine rectum anus liver also plays a role in here uh, pancreas also plays a role here so all these organs combine together to form an organ system so how is the organs formed simple tissues join together to form organs right so how is the tissue formed cells join together to form tissues correct tissues join together to form organ organ join together to form organ system different organ system combines to form organism clear cool next <clears throat> so here we'll just start with the first one as i said so here this is a oral cavity this oral cavity we have another name also we call this to be a buccal cavity so this is the first organ which is inward and then you have esophagus then stomach then you have small intestine you have large intestine and here you have uh, rectum here you have uh, you have rectum and then you at last you have your anus clear so this diagram is easy diagram and you can draw it on your own no problem uh, again and again you just have to keep practicing because you'll have very less time right you cannot keep erasing drawing again keep erasing you don't have to only if you have a very good practice you can start drawing in one particular flow and here liver the very largest gland it also helps in this digestion process and here you have pancreas pancreas also plays a role in it okay we'll start with the oral cavity or the buccal cavity okay so in buccal cavity what all is present in mouth so normally you have teeth you have then what do you have tongue you have and then what do you have you have saliva you have the liquid that is present correct so these three things you have so when you are talking about teeth where four different types of teeth you have molars premolars incisors canines or we can say incisors canines molars and premolars so these are the four different types of cells and uh, which helps sorry it helps in masticating the food or breaking down the food correct and uh, each and every teeth it has been coated by a very strong substance you call that to be an enamel the strongest part and it is a part i mean like very strongest part in our human body correct the enamel and then what do you have along with the teeth you have this tongue tongue plays a very very important role it helps in talking it helps in showing the food it helps the food to be mixed very well with the saliva and also helps in the taste of the food because it has a lot of taste buds on it <laughs> clear yes uh i've got a question here will kidney play an uh, play any role in the digestive system kidney plays a very important role in excretion process it doesn't have a very major role in digestive system because kidneys are an excretory organ correct so all this energy that has been uh, the nourishment that has been absorbed by the blood goes to the kidney there where it get purified which means it will take the blood it gets purified there so excess urea excess water it's been expelled and the blood becomes again it is given to the system so uh, kidneys basically it will help us in excretion process yes suresh correct okay thanks for your question suresh all right so let's come back to this uh, 
where, where we are being. Yes. So here, we were talking about tongue, right? Yes. So tongue, basically it has a lot of taste buds uh, on it, which helps in tasting the food. So different types of tastes, we have sweet, we have sour, we have bitter, we have, right? And what else we have? Yeah, so these are the major types of taste that uh, tongue tastes. And then the saliva. Saliva plays a very, very major role or very, very important role here. So why does the, or how does the saliva play an important role? It not only lubricates the food, but also it contain, contains an enzyme. So what is the enzyme that it contains? Yes, salivary amylase it contains. Okay, which helps in the digestion process of carbs or carbohydrates. So digestive process for carbohydrates starts in our mouth itself. Okay, so anywhere, whenever you are having this word amylase, so amylase is something which is always related to the breakdown of car carbohydrates. Okay, you just have, uh, you can just have this in mind. Okay, even in our pancreas, pancreatic juice will secrete an amylase which helps in the breakdown of carbs only. Trypsin you have which helps in the breakdown of protein. Okay, here salivary amylase, carbon dioxide, sorry, carbohydrate breakdown. Then what will happen? Salivary amylase digests the starch and converts them into sucrose. Is that clear? So when we are talking about the oral cavity or the buccal cavity, three things you just have to have in mind. One is the teeth, tongue and the saliva. So saliva, how has it been produced? We have glands everywhere, submandibular gland, we have parotid gland, we have sublingual gland, we have. So all these salivary glands which we are present here, here and here, there. So all these glands will start secreting the saliva. Is that clear? And all these salivary glands are exocrine gland, which means the secretion is happening outside the body or outside the gland it is happening. So these salivary glands or the exocrine glands are completely responsible for the secretion of saliva. Is that clear? Hmm? Next. So mouth is done. So now let's focus on this esophagus. So before this esophagus, I mean like there is a connection between this esophagus and the oral cavity here. So this particular area, you call this to be pharynx. So what is a pharynx? It's a common passage for both wind and food. Is that clear? So that pharynx, in the pharynx, you have this particular special flap-like structure called the epiglottis. Wait, let me show you. So this, let's say this is a tube-like structure which is arranged like this continuously. It is arranged, okay? In the starting here, this is a pharynx. Let's say let's it has a valve-like structure like this. So this is called as the epiglottis. So it is a valve which will actually close our uh, food pipe when we are breathing in air. And when we are swallowing, especially when we are swallowing the food, none, no, we will not breathe, which means inhaling of air and swallowing of food will not happen simultaneously. So that is why people will tell you not to laugh or talk when you are eating. Is that clear? So this one, like when you are swallowing the food, uh, the epiglottis will go close the windpipe. Is that clear? Correct? So now we just move on to the, yes, so that is a pharynx which you just have to have in mind. So now to the esophagus. Hollow muscular tube that connects the throat and the stomach. Okay, it is about 25 centimeter long. It is muscular and it, um, like once the food is moved from this particular area to the throat, from here the esophagus starts, right? So as soon as we saw, swallow, what will happen is like, some contraction movement, so like this it will contract and it will expand, this tube it will contract, it will push the food, again it will take the food, it will push the food, okay, it will be keep on doing, receiving the food like this, it will contract slowly here, it will open here, so like that it will happen, so that particular movement you call that to be a peristaltic movement or we can say like peristalsis, so what is peristalsis, the, uh, the, once again, <coughs> The rhythmic contraction and expansion or we can normally say the rhythmic contraction of muscles of lining of the elementary canal to push the forward foot forward is called as a peristaltic movement or you can say that to be peristalsis also. Okay, so here you can see this word. What is an elementary canal? From your mouth till the anus you call that to be an elementary canal because it is a one continuous tube. In the middle, you have a bulge, stomach, not all, not all, in the middle, middle, you'll have some, some bulges, okay? So, in the large intestine, you have bulge, rectum, you have a bulge, stomach is a J-shaped bag-like structure. So, all these bulges are there, but it is a complete kennel where one, time, one end it starts, the other end it uh, goes out of the body. Hmm? So, next, 
So oral cavity is done, pharynx is done, esophagus is done. Now the food is entering into this uh, stomach. Okay. So when it is entering into the stomach, just like that, lotakun it will not follow. It will not fall. There you have a valve again. So in the opening of the stomach also you have a valve. In the closing of the stomach, when it is entering into the small intestine, there also you have a valve. Okay, sphincter's valve you have. So which will help in the opening and closing of the stomach basically. So now once the food is inside the stomach. Hmm. Here, we don't call that to be stomach. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. We don't call that to be food. You have to call that to be bolus. Why is it bolus? Because it is no more a food. We are masticating with our teeth. And as we are masticating, saliva is getting fully, it is on the entire food there. And after it is continuously, I mean, like it is present all over the food, it is mixed. It is called as bolus. I write here. Okay. So now that bolus has entered the stomach here. There, there again digestion starts. Okay. So stomach J-shaped bag-like structure. Alright. It is completely muscular. The entire elementary canal is actually muscular. Yeah. From your esophagus, still the anus, there is no bones. Completely muscular organ only. Alright. So muscular walls of the stomach helps in shoring of the food. Is that clear? Hmm. So now. One of the very special quality for this uh, stomach is like, mm, it is, it has a mucus, not only stomach, from here, inside, inside when you touch it with your tongue itself, you can find some slippery kind of thing, correct? So that is a mucus, mucus lining, which helps like the food doesn't go, get stuck to the walls. So that mucus helps in the uh, movement of the food very well, swallowing here and there, the backlogs, nothing will be there. So this mucus lining again from here, from the mouth till anus, it is there in stomach, it will be more. Okay, and stomach is where like hydrochloric acid is secreted. Here where the first acid comes in the mouth we were studying about the salivary amylase, the enzyme. Okay, so now we are, you just have to have in mind in the stomach what is coming, hydrochloric acid is coming. So why is a hydrochloric acid coming? What is the use of the hydrochloric acid? Me, it kills the germs which is actually present in the food and it also increases the acidity content of the food there. Is it clear? And stomach, it will be continuously, it will be churning, 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 which helps in breaking down the foodstuffs. So complex molecules are actually broken down in this particular process of digestion by the action of this hydrochloric acid also. So after that, what will happen? This bolus, where is my pen? Ah, so here this bolus, here after the addition of this hydrochloric acid, you call this to be chyme. C-H-Y-M-E, chyme. So, it is no more a bolus now. So, this chyme, now it actually falls out. Where it goes? It goes to the duodenum. Duodenum where the actual digestion process happens. How is it happening? Very simple. By the action of this liver and also by this pancreas which is hiding inside there. Okay. So, a liver, the largest gland which secretes. Mm. I have liver here. Ah. So largest organ, we also say that to be the, it is not the largest organ, it is the second largest organ actually. The first largest organ is our skin, right? So liver is one of the largest organ and it is the largest gland actually. It helps in the protection of this particular uh, substance called as a bile. Okay, if you see here, you will come to know. So this bile is actually produced in this gallbladder. So it has been produced in the liver, it stores in the gallbladder for some time and then it opens up into the duodenum here. Okay, and pancreas also, pancreatic juices it produces, those pancreatic juices all, which means uh, it's an exocrine gland, also an endocrine gland. Okay, so it secretes both. So here, uh, it secretes insulin as an endocrine gland, as exocrine gland, pancreatic juices it secretes. So those pancreatic juices, what is the main, uh, what we can say, what is the main uh, purpose of this uh, gland, we can say, like it helps in the breakdown of trypsin, it helps in the breakdown of amylase, chymotrypsin, lipase and all those things. Is it clear? And now, so once this has been secreted, it just flows or fa falls into this duodenum where the digestion actually happens. And from here, it will move to the small intestine there. Is it clear? So now let's look at the small intestine. So small intestine is about 6 meters or 20 meters, tw sorry, 20 feet long. Okay. So now when we are talking about the small intestine, one thing you just have to have in mind. So this small intestine, it helps in, or we can say like uh, it helps in absorption. It also uh, enhances or it also initiates this assimilation process. 
okay so when we are talking about this uh, small intestine it has been divided into three different parts so can somebody tell me like what are the three different parts of uh, small intestine yes very simple it is actually mentioned there so duodenum jejunum and ileum so duodenum is a place where it connects the uh, i mean like as soon as the stomach from the stomach the chyme enters into the duodenum there is that clear so there where the liver and the pancreas pours their own juices there and from there again digestion happens continuously it happens the entire duodenum and from the duodenum it moves on to this jejunum <coughs> is it clear so there is one particular special quality of uh, a duodenum sorry of, of this jejunum so what is that special quality is like the will like finger like projections are present in this jejunum okay uh, so when we are talking about this villi, let me just show you how it will be. Is it clear? Oh, okay. I've got uh, this one. How much hydrochloric acid will be created? Okay. So in an adult, so thanks for your question, Suresh. Samiksha Suresh, correct? Yes. Thanks for your question. So approximately 2 liters in an average adult, approximately 2 liters of hydrochloric acid is produced okay okay and kirti raksha welcome hi hello kirti raksha ma'am what is bile juice see bile juice is actually secreted in the liver which helps in digestion okay uh, we are eating very complex substances for example like uh, we eat proteins we eat carbohydrates fats and all those things right so all these has to be broken down so all these how will get broken down for that we need specified uh, enzyme secretions or specified secretions there which helps in emulsification it helps in absorption it helps in digestion of especially fat so it is actually a liquid which is produced in the liver it will get stored in the gallbladder for some time so what is the major role of bile i'll just tell you again so it helps in alkanization or, al or to be very very clear I'll tell you like okay it helps in emulsification okay and it helps in absorption it also helps in digestion of especially fat so fat is something which is very very complex for digestion okay so that is why we people like normally say to reduce the amount of fat carbohydrate it will take time again to, dig uh, to digest or to break down protein will take time fat it is very very complicated to break down is it clear so that emulsification of fat or emulsification of digestion process or this particular breakdown of fat it helps is that clear kirti thank you for your question again so yes what we are we discussing now correct so liver is the largest organ in the human sorry second largest organ as said right uh, yeah 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 jejunum correct we are back to this jejunum now in this jejunum one particular area see this is a small intestine let's say Small intestines, uh, we'll say like inner wall. All right. Oh, yeah. Let me say, okay. So, in this small intestine, when you see so many finger like projections will be there. So, all these finger like projections, you call this to be villi. Okay. So, all inside this villi, when you actually zoom this villi and see here, so many small, small villi will be actually present. So all those are called as micro villi. All micro villi combine together to become one single villi. What is the use of this villi? It helps in absorption. How is it absorbing? Because it is designed for that. And why is it having that structure? To increase the surface area. Say for example, when you look at this and look at this, the surface area for this particular structure is more. That is why villi is also like that. It helps in absorption of the nutrition. Is that clear? So, this villi will be continuously supplied with a lot of rich uh, or very, very fresh blood capillaries. Okay. So, all those blood capillaries are protruded into this villi. Okay. And from that villi only all the absorption takes place directly it goes to the blood there. To the capillaries it directly goes. From there, blood carries to all the other parts for assimilation process. Is that clear? See, in a holozoic uh, mode of nutrition in human being, we were discussing about five. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation you leave, ingestion. So, all these four processes happens in the elementary canal. So, this assimilation alone happens all over the body. Is that clear? Clear? Cool. So, next. One second.
okay fine cool so now we'll just move on mm. so small intestine is also done uh, small intestine you have this ileum right ileum also has villi but uh, when compared to jejunum ileum has very less villi so from the ileum it just moves the particular uh, substance the chyme it moves to the large intestine large intestine where excess water is absorbed okay and all this uh, gets ejected or ejected outside the body there okay so large intestine so some water and salt are absorbed by the walls of the large intestine after which the undigested food goes to the rectum there and there where fermentation happens okay so the large intestine there it will be containing a lot of numerous good bacteria which helps in that particular process is that clear and from there it gets stored there stored in the rectum for some time and then it gets expelled out through the particular opening called as a anus is that clear so this is the entire uh, digestion process in human being large intestine okay it is 1.5 meters to 5 feet long so this information also you have okay clear clear okay so this is about nutrition one is done so now let's move to the respiration let me also take a break okay so respiration is a biochemical process in a living organism which involves in producing energy okay so what is basically respiration it's a biochemical process normally you shouldn't say like okay respiration is a process where inhalation and exhalation happens yes of course it happens but it is basically a biochemical process in living organism where our ultimate aim is to produce energy only why do we want energy because energy helps in energy is something which helps to sustain life in an individual and for example let's say we are eating an egg oh sorry we are eating any plant or we are eating a, any other chicken or something the energy transfer only it happens is that clear from producers to primary consumers primary consumer to the secondary consumer secondary to tertiary is that clear and tertiary to the decomposer so that is a energy flow so that is how the energy has to flow is it clear so this produces from where do they get energy directly from the inorganic substances they directly get it okay yes so for that flow of energy we have to maintain energy we have to get energy so in order to produce energy only we have this particular process called as a respiration process okay clear done cool so now before we get into respiration of humans directly we just have to know the pathways that how the glucose is actually broken down in different pathways there are three different pathways okay so this is one glucose six carbon molecule or what is the formula for glucose that we discussed c6 h12 o6 simple very very easy okay so this particular glucose enters into the cell inside the cell where the energy is produced how is the cell let's say okay this is a cell okay here where the nucleus is present nucleolus is there this chromatin reticulum is there mitochondria you have okay endoplasmic reticulum you have okay golgi apparatus you have you vacuole also you have you have a lot of things okay so this is a cytoplasm let's say and this is a cell membrane this is an animal cell because animal cell doesn't have a cell wall it has only the cell membrane so now this glucose is entering into the cell okay so in the cytoplasm it is broken down into three carbon molecules so this is a six carbon molecule right so this pyruvate it gets broken down in the cytoplasm okay so now if oxygen is there and it is entering into this pyruvate or the three carbon compound is entering into the mitochondria let's say oxygen sorry carbon dioxide and water plus energy is produced in the mitochondria especially in mitochondria let's say like in the absence of oxygen so this is in the presence of oxygen let's say in the absence of oxygen what is happening for example in the yeast cell yeast cell why do we use so in the fermentation process we use in baking industries we use your mummy will also use to prepare this idli dosa uh, the yeast correct so in the absence of yeast what will happen ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy is produced is it clear so here i would like to write some of the equation so you also quickly make a note so this equation i guess like it's not given in your book your teachers might have taught you i'm also here to teach you okay so now uh, in the absence of oxygen let's say c6 h12 o6 absence of oxygen ethanol formula i'm writing okay c2 h5 oh plus carbon dioxide simple carbon dioxide you know 
ethanol. So this is a formula for ethanol. So here pyruvate, it is a 3 carbon molecule I said. So glucose is a 6 carbon molecule. In the cytoplasm, it has been broken down into 2 carbon molecule. Chha. 2, 3 carbon molecule. So, yeah. so this 3 carbon molecule, again it is getting broken down here. One is escaping, it, escaping out as carbon dioxide and other 2 carbon is here. Along with this hydrogen, along with this oxygen, it is getting evolved into ethanol. So ethanol, na, it is a fermentation process. There way the pungent smell you get, the ethanol smell you get. Sometimes like it is very much fermented, no? you will get that pungent smell. Okay, so this is a formula for ethanol. So here every formula, let's say, if it is ending with OH, OH is an alcohol group. You will study all these in your organic chemistry. So as of now, just have this in mind. C2H5OH, okay. Then if it is uh, presence of oxygen, you know very well what is happening. So I will write that here. 6CO2 you have and 6H2O you have and then you have energy. <clears throat> lactic acid, this is a very important thing. Just have in mind, okay. Lactic acid formula, I'll write. Make a note. I'll hide. Uh. Okay, I'll write it here, okay. Because there I'm hiding. Clear? Okay. I'll write it here. So, CH3, CHOH, COOH. Is that clear? So, this is a formula for lactic acid. Very big formula. Please have in mind. <coughs> write it down. I'll give you time. I'll give you one second time. Write it down. I'll read it for you. CH3, CHOH, COOH. Is it clear? The, the acidic bond, COOH, which is acidic bond there. And other it's like for lactic acid actually. Then, hmm? now you tell me. So, this lactic acid, in, it is mentioned as in human muscle cells. Where it is happening in muscle cells? Let's say, you know very well, a person, if uh, he is practicing this weight lifting, let's say, or he is going for this uh, running or athlete. Okay. So, all of a sudden, this muscle cramps happen for them. So, because each and every cell in our body requires equal amount of oxygen at every time. Reasonable amount of oxygen should be there at any at all the time it should be there. If anywhere it is lacking oxygen, then it happens. So there the muscle cell, it is actually using a lot of energy because it is running, the legs especially. It is running, so it is spending a <coughs> it is spending a lot of energy there. So as the energy is getting spent, it should be continuously uh, supplied, right? If the supply is very, very less, but the expense is more, what will happen? It will run out of oxygen there. So when it is running out of oxygen, what will happen? It will result in, it will instead of producing, instead of making or instead of this carbon dioxide and water formation, it will get formed into lactic acid there. Is that clear? And afterwards, like when we are easing out this lactic acid, again it will get converted into carbon dioxide and water after some time. But instantly this happens. Lactic acid produced uh, or it's getting produced because of lack of oxygen in the muscle cells especially. Same thing only happens with the weight lifters also when they are weight, uh, lifting a very, very heavy weight, this happens. Is that clear? Done. Okay, yeast, of course, it doesn't require oxygen for its growth and all those things. So that is why it don't use oxygen. Instead, it will directly produce its ethanol and it will make uh, this carbon dioxide. Clear? Done. Shall we move to the next? Hmm. Respiration in human. Is that clear? So, respiration in human, very, very simple, very, very simple, very easy also, okay, very small. So, when you are talking about this digestive system, digestive system is an elaborated process, right? So, this one stops here only, see, listen. So, here, very simple, it has a nasal passage, it has pharynx, it has, because pharynx is a common passage for both. Larynx, you have <laughs> the voice box and trachea, you have and uh, trachea actually branches into bronchi where the point where it is getting split so this area you call that to be bronchi and bronchioles so each one this is one bronchiole this is one bronchi and again it uh, sorry this is a bronchi right so bronchi and this gets divided into many which is called this a bronchiole bronchiole again it subdivides and it ends in the alveolar sac so here see this so this is a bronchioles <laughs> And this is an alveoli. Can you see all these bulb like something which you already know alveoli where? And here alveoli you have the blood capillaries where the blood capillaries are completely surrounding this alveoli. Exchange of gases happens in the alveoli only. Is that clear? Let me drink water. 
okay two minutes i'll be back i'm just drinking water i'll be back done cool you can also have uh, water something you can also eat something in the middle you can pause also take a break and watch no issues all right so yes respiration in human where am i here i am oh yeah so respiratory tract <coughs> so these this is a flow where the air flows from nose it starts alveoli it ends air again from alveoli the same process happens so this is actually a two-way process see digestion if you say it will start in one point it will go through the other point it will end so it is a one-way process but respiration is not like that it's a two-way process from nose to alveol alveoli it goes again from alveoli it goes back to the nose is that clear yes so nose we have two different nostrils here we have so two different nostrils which is actually which helps in the inhalation process or the breathing process it helps breathing in air okay and inside the nose you have mucus layer you have and also very small cilia which you have which helps in filtering the foreign particles okay so that is why like even if a small dust enters into it you will try to sneeze it out not you but it is a involuntary function okay so it is a very sensitive uh, cilia which uh, has i mean like it is highly sensitive it uh, responds so easily so quickly okay so that is a nose area so from the nose area here it goes down to the larynx the voice box and then the pharynx which we already discussed and then the trachea so trachea when we are talking about this trachea it is made up of c-shaped cartilages rings why you may wonder so when we are talking about esophagus it's a muscular tube even that is a tube where food goes through the peristaltic movement but here for food it's a we do not have rings but why for air we are having rings cartilages ring then by what is the use of the rings it helps the trachea the windpipe it maintains its structure it prevents collapsing it can prevents a collapsing it maintains its structure why yes hmm? have you ever thought i'll tell you see why is the c-shaped cartilages rings are present is because we are inhaling air our two lungs are there it will it gets filled with air and we are expelling the air what will happen it will contract correct air pressure is created inside air pressure when, even when you are inhaling the air pressure is created when we are exhaling also the air pressure is there so in order to maintain the air pressure when we are expelling the air in order to maintain the particular pressure these sorry these rings are actually present is that clear yeah. If the rings are not present, it will collapse literally because we are expelling all the way. I mean, like all the air out. And here, as I said, this respiratory tract is a two-way process. But digestive tract is not like that. It's a one-way process. So even without any support, it can be. But here we need support. That's why we have ribs. That's why we have the cartilages, rings, and all those things. Clear? Yes. So trachea again, you have bronchi. We'll discuss one by one as in your nose i said tiny hair follicles that cover the internal lining of the no nostrils urban like nostrils and helps in defending the foreign pathogens that's what we sneeze i said right so larynx which is responsible for the vocals and also it helps in respiration okay larynx the voice box we also call this to be a voice box clear next pharynx common passage for both see this one will be shared as a notes also right so don't worry even if i move forward you will be getting this in notes okay next trachea the windpipe see c-shaped cartilages rings are present which helps in maintaining the shape of the tube then you have this bronchi and alveoli so bronchi will be divided into secondary and tertiary and into numerous bronchioles and which will end up in this air like uh, pockets which is called as a alveoli right so there where the exchange of carbon dioxide and uh, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place from the bloodstream okay so for example like let's say this is a bronchi and you have this alveoli here and you have the numerous blood capillaries will be there is that clear so all these blood capillaries what will happen so here if you just zoom and see let's say this is a zoomed area huh. so this is a tube 
oxygen is being carried. No, carbon dioxide is carried in this tube. This is a blood capillary I am telling. So, in the alveoli, we are breathing in normal air, which contains oxygen, it contains nitrogen, carbon dioxide, everything it contains. Yes or no? no. From there, oxygen alone enters into this. How? I will tell you. So, oxygen alone is entering into it. Again, from here, the carbon dioxide enters into this alveoli and which gets or passes through all the track there. So, now tell me, how is this blood capillary spotting only the oxygen it is taking? Very simple process, but very, very important process, which is called as diffusion. What is diffusion? Uh -huh. Very simple, movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, you say this to be a diffusion process. Is that clear? Hmm? See, when we are talking about diffusion and osmosis, both are actually same. But in osmosis, certain differences are there because osmosis takes place with the solvent molecules only. Osmosis will happen only through the semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis will require energy for some time. But diffusion, it is not like that. It happens just like that in order to maintain equilibrium. Is it clear? So, in just to maintain the equilibrium, this diffusion process happens there. Is it clear? Fine. Good. So next, yeah, lungs, we have a pair of lungs, uh, which also, which have, comprises all this bronchioli, alveoli, everything is present inside the lungs only. Is it clear? So it is a double, um, like, it is a organ which helps in this digestion, pro sorry, respiration process. It expands on contracts and when we are comparing both the lungs, it is safely present inside the, in the thoracic region in between the ribs. And in between the lungs is where our uh, very good uh, king of organs, it is actually present, our heart. Okay. So next. Huh. So this is about the respiration. So when you are talking about respiration, the thing that you have just have to have in mind is the equation the glucose pathway. So that is only really very, very important when you are uh, dealing or when you are discussing about this respiration here. Okay. So now, uh, respiration is where the energy is actually produced. So energy is produced or uh, energy is actually formed, right? So the food which we eat, so from there the glucose comes. This glucose is getting transported to all the over the body. How is it is transported by the blood only that we will discuss now. And then what will happen? From the blood, it is taking the oxygen also or sorry, the used up carbon dioxide it takes or oxygen it takes or whatever it takes there. But it, where it is taking or where is the exchange happening? It is happening in the alveoli only. Is it clear? Clear with the respiration? Hmm? So next, transportation in human being. Yeah, so when we are talking about transportation in human being, these are the four different uh, parts we can say. Parts we can say like four different structures that is completely involved we can say. Let's say like it is starting with the heart because that is a king organ, right? And then we have arteries, veins, we have blood capillaries we have and along with that we also have blood. Blood capillaries, arteries, I mean like all these comes together on the heart and blood is a major uh, organ that is actually involved in this transportation process, in transportation in human, okay? So transportation, when we are talking about it, the energy that is being spent or the nutrition or the result of nutrition, the result of respiration combines together in the blood only and it gets transported in the human being. When we are talking about the plants, it is a different story where we have the xylem and phloem. First, let's complete this and then we'll go there, okay? So now, starting with the human heart. So what is heart? Every time I'm changing this paint color. What is heart? It's an organ, muscular organ, which is made up of a special type of muscles called as cardiac muscles. Is it clear? Because why is heart continuously, I mean, it has a special type of muscle because heart is the only organ which doesn't have rest at all. It has to pump, it has to be keep on, it should be in movement 24 bar 7 until an organism has life. Yes or no? So even our stomach can take break, lungs also can take break because it can take break. So all the other organs, organs are just like that. But this heart, not like that. It has to function continuously. Yes or no? Yes. So for that only, it has been made up of a special type of muscle. You say that to be a cardiac muscles. Okay. And when we are looking into the heart, different organs, I mean, different organisms will have different, different types of heart. Okay. As the order of organism increases, the chambers in the heart also increases. When we are talking about a human heart, it is basically made up of four different chambers. 
okay two auricles two ventricles initially we used to say auricles right so now it is atrium so it has a right atrium left atrium left ventricle right ventricle drawing a heart is also easy only okay you just have to practice two ventricles it have two auricles two atria it has okay so now when we are talking about this heart one side it is continuously responsible for the uh, oxygenated blood the other side it is continuously or it is responsible for the deoxygenated blood why do we say deoxygenated blood means it doesn't mean it doesn't have oxygen but the percentage of oxygen is a bit less is it clear in a, a air or in an atmosphere let's say like 23 percent of oxygen is present okay so in when an air is getting expelled or this deoxygenated blood how much oxygen it will have now it will have only 16 percent of oxygen hmm? is it clear carbon dioxide level when we say it will be like 0 0.043 and when in an expelling when we are expelling exhaling out or in this blood when you check it will be of four percent approximately is it clear so very slight variation only we have but that variation also counts hmm? okay so that is why we say that to be oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood is that clear clear let's start with start again okay so now so what is happening see this is a normal structure of a heart when you're looking at the structure of a heart you have this atrium right left you have this ventricle right left and then we have a normal wall here it's called a susceptor which divides the auricles and divides the ventricles also and then you have a lot of valves which is connected here so here a major valve we have this is a tricuspid valve and here we have a bicuspid valve and even here you have the valves okay so why do why is all these valves there to prevent the backflow of the blood okay so that is why it opens only in one direction it doesn't open both the direction only in one direction it opens it prevents the backflow of the blood is it clear and then when you're looking at the tubes here multiple tubes the major tubes which you just have to have in mind is like pulmonary artery pulmonary vein okay so when we're talking about this okay i'll come back i'll come back okay and then you have this aorta and you have this vena cava okay here also you have the vena cava so here when it is from the upper side of the body you say that to be superior vena cava okay and here you say inferior vena cava all right so superior vena cava i'll write it again so i'll just write yes okay superior vena cava inferior vena cava and this aorta a major artery okay and here you see pulmonary i was telling why pulmonary artery pulmonary vein this pulmonary is a word which is always related to lungs hmm? see when we are talking about heart we say cardiac correct so when we are talking about stomach we say gastric gastrointestinal we say gas gas and it will come so when we are talking about lungs it is all about uh, pulmonary when we are talking about eyes we say optics opticals we say is it clear so these are certain scientific terms which we will of course you will you will learn when you're talking about kidneys renal we say okay so these are certain terms which you have to have in mind okay you will get it no issues so now let's say uh blood is flowing okay from the superior vena cava which means like upper part of the body all are like head both the arms and then you have this uh, abdomen okay so from here or let's say like the lungs so from here this blood is flowing into this vena cava here it is flowing so it is flowing into this where it is flowing ah, to the right ventricle it is flowing so all these are deoxygenated blood or used up blood from the body parts it is coming right so from all the body parts means where the body cells have already consumed the energy where they have taken the oxygen they've taken the glucose okay which has been produced they have already taken it so that particular used blood or the deoxygenated blood comes and flows into this right ventricle so again where it is ah, from here this inferior vena cava from here also it flows into the right ventricle through this tricuspid valve from here it is going to the pulmonary artery okay so from the palm to the palm oh like, where it is going to the pulmonary artery it is going to the lungs for purification is it clear so there in lungs what will happen hmm? purification happens which means like the lungs it goes 
let me write the lungs okay inside the lungs what will happen you will have this alveoli right so this arteries will branch 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 it will end in capillaries when it is ending into capillary it will, it will, capillaries it will goes there and from here the carbon dioxide escapes out to this alveoli from the alveoli oxygen enters into this capillaries is it clear yes so this carbon dioxide actually it gets expelled and again we'll inhale that oxygen goes into this one so this uh, capillary enters again so now where it will go it will go from the now this capillary is oxygen rich so this oxygen rich capillary branch together to form pulmonary vein so this pulmonary vein from the lungs it will pour into the left atrium left atrium again to the left ventricle from here it goes to the aorta from aorta to all the parts of the body it goes this is a flow is that clear clear shall i say it again oh, very simple see from all the parts of the body from the upper part superior vena cava is in charge from the lower part all your abdomen your leg uh, from there this um, inferior vena cava is in charge so what will happen both the vena cava collect the blood deoxygenated blood they will take it in the atrium they will put it and from the atrium it enters into the ventricles from there to the pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery carries this blood to the lungs for purification so their purification happens and from there it comes to the pulmonary vein and it enters into the left atrium left ventricle from left ventricle to the aorta it goes now is it clear it is very very simple only okay so we have discussed a very detailed uh, chapter about this in our uh, sessions in our previous sessions you can look into it i mean like it is a very beautiful session which i really liked with all those diagrams in the light room i really enjoyed you also go look at it you will get a better idea is that clear so is this clear ah yes good so next when we are talking about this uh, what is this yes auricles so uh, arteries and veins arteries are something which will carry the um, blood which means oxygen rich blood they will carry veins are something which will carry the deoxygenated blood there where one exception is there so this is that exception the pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery is a one and only artery which will carry in a normal adult male see in females it differs when they are carrying or when they are pregnant it differs that you don't worry as of now only in adult males let's say we'll say like and again in females also like when they are not pregnant okay so pulmonary artery is the one and only artery which will carry the deoxygenated blood and pulmonary vein is the one and only vein which will carry the oxygenated blood except this two one this two or the except except this one all other arteries will carry the oxygenated blood all the veins will carry the deoxygenated blood clear cool next blood carrying blood carrying blood what is blood fluid connective tissue is it clear because it is a fluid but it is a tissue we don't say blood to be an organ right yes because it is a tissue right so we say that to be a fluid connective tissue that plays a very very important role in carrying the substances all the other substances to the body what all it carries from one place to other place it helps in transportation it transports the glucose that we eat it transports the oxygen it transports carbon dioxide and then it transports the hormones enzymes that has been secreted pituitary gland is here correct so from there the hormone is secreted where it is released it is released in the blood from from the blood it is going to all the other parts of the body is it clear next one second no now it is fine clear yes so what is this blood composed of very simple it is composed of plasma and it is composed of blood cells it composed of platelets is it clear so plasma which is 90% it is made up of water only in the blood if we say more than 45% it is made up of plasma only so blood cells are there very simple blood cells rbcs are there wbcs are there the red blood corpuscles white blood corpuscles white blood corpuscles which helps in this immune system and all those things right the blood cells and then you have the platelets and along with it you also have this fibrinogen and all those things correct mm. in transportation this double circulation is very very important i'll tell you yes why is double circulation very important what is double circulation circulation you know it is getting circulated why double circulation now because two times it is getting circulated i'll tell you what is a circuit okay here we talk in terms of circuit one circuit is where let's say from the body this vena cava is are collecting the blood it is pouring into the heart 
from the heart it is going to through the aorta sorry from the heart it is going to the lungs so lung there where the lung capillaries are there the alveoli so there where the exchange is happening right so that oxygen carbon dioxide exchange is happening from there it is pouring to the pulmonary vein so this is one circuit okay so one circuit is something which is completely responsible for circulation in the lungs other circuit is something which is completely responsible other than lungs all the other body parts it takes care is that clear clear correct so two circuits are involved so all the two circuits it pours the blood into the heart and takes the blood from the heart so basically the blood flows twice in the heart that is why it is called as a double circulation okay so two circuits one with blood uh, lungs completely involved only lungs and other except lung all the other parts are involved brain is involved heart is involved heart i mean like heart also requires blood la continuous supply of uh, uh, blood required in the heart and then you have other organs except that one right so that is why you call this to be a double circulation i tell you again so from the body cell it flows to this uh, right atrium from the right atrium right ventricle right ventricle to the lung capillaries there so from the lung capillaries it moves to the pulmonary vein so pulmonary vein brings the blood to this left atrium and left atrium to the left ventricle left ventricle to aorta to all the parts of the body so here again it gets used up all the body cells use up and deoxygenated blood cycle again travels clear double circulation good translocation in plants next topic same transportation only but here we call this to be translocation because uh, food stuffs water it is getting translocated from one location to other location it is going on okay so that is why you say this to be a translocation two very very important cells are involved here group of cells okay so or we can say like vascular tissues vascular bundles we can say why do we say it as vascular bundle because first i'll tell you what it is one is xylem <coughs> and other is phloem xylem phloem is it clear so all the xylem and phloem you call this to be vascular bundles or vascular tissues let's say now it occurs in bundles so you call that to be vascular bundles how in bundles xylem adjacent to xylem phloem will be there after some gap xylem will be there phloem will be there xylem phloem so it will always occur uh, in bundles xylem and phloem will always remain together 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 so that is why you call that to be vascular bundles is that clear hmm? so now let's talk about xylem oh ah. yes so xylem helps in uh, like in water or this translocation transportation of water happens by two different mechanisms one is the by the transpiration pull and other is by the root pressure okay so xylem complete in charge of water transportation and xylem is um, greek word we call that to be like it is derived or we also say that to be wood and for your reference xylem cells are dead cells hmm. dead cells are there then how is the conduction happening very simple which you know it is because of the transpiration pull how is the transpiration pull happening let's say this is a tree and here where one leaf is there and this is a roots okay so transpiration pull normally the water column let's say like this is a xylem which is actually maintained here okay so this so this session also last time when we were discussing in the class it was very interesting session yes so please go watch the video previous video it will be mentioned in the link below in all the description you will be getting the link where you can go watch it okay so here transpiration what is basically transpiration the removal of excess water from the plant you call that to be transpiration not only that is transpiration when the water goes away from the plant you say that to be transpiration okay so by the transpiration suction pull happens so that suction pull influences the other water molecule that is present one influences the other other influences the other other to other other other, other. it continuously influences which continuously creates a column there so that particular column only you call that to be a water column which is maintained in the xylem so where is the water are present in abundance the water is present here in abundance so from here the xylem pulls the water up so who is actually pulling the water sun because of transpiration clear so transpiration pull is nothing but where 
the suction process happens where in which the water column without getting disturbed it gets maintained is it clear in the xylem so this happens in the daytime so what about in the night time there where this root pressure plays a important role so how is the root pressure playing an important role you have a root let's say this is a root hat so many minerals are present around okay so in the night what will happen this uh, root hair will spend some energy it in pulling all the minerals towards it when it is pulling all the minerals towards it the mineral concentration here will be less so in order to make it equal in order to make a equilibrium there in the water will also rush in so all the water when it is rushing and what will happen this column is again maintained so from the root hair root the entire stem the branches leaf margin leaf blade everywhere is it clear so in the morning transpiration pull is responsible for the conduction of water in the night root pressure is responsible for the conduction of water now can you understand what is this hmm? and xylem cells you just have to have this in mind xylem cells are dead cells which means like they'll have only the cell wall the cytoplasm stuff nucleus mitochondria nothing is present everything is dead clear but still the water column is maintained because of these two uh, factors next translocation of food so when we are talking about food phloem comes to picture is phloem doing in this alone no it always does with the help of xylem only how is it doing with the help of a xylem i'll tell you see here with the phloem you will have the adjacent cells here you call this to be companion cells okay uh, companion cells so and uh, adjacent to the companion cell you have a normal cell is it clear here where the starch is produced let's say this is a leaf cell oh this is a leaf cell let's say and this is something which is present in the root let's say and there are a lot of cells in the middle okay so here in the middle there are a lot of cells we'll just assume i'll write like this okay a lot of cells so when it is producing this food what will happen so this uh, cell this phloem cell will spend some energy again this phloem cell is like uh, what to say it contains very less cytoplasm only all the information um, such survival of the cell or all the cell related uh, concepts or all those things it's been controlled by the companion cells only so for this also the cell only takes care the companion cell that is why life partner we can say we can also say that to be oh sorry that is why we are saying that to be a companion because it's always present to it and takes care of it okay then <laughs> see listen so what is happening the mineral sorry the starch is present right so all the starch this phloem cell here so this sieve cells it will spend some active energy in pulling the minerals towards it is it clear so when it is pulling the mineral stuff so, sorry not the minerals when pulling the starch molecule towards it, it will be start continuously consuming the starch whichever it has been produced in the leaf so as it is continuously consuming the first process happens which is the active loading because it is loading the starch towards itself right so when they are so mission okay hello mission i don't know like what is your entire name because i can see only mission here what are phloem cells see phloem cells are are specialized modified cells which are responsible for the translocation of foods uh, foodstuffs in the plant so basically here in plant what is a food starch is a food or glucose is a food which is a result of photosynthesis so which is prepared in the leaf and all the green parts so which is the what to say the glucose that is present or prepared in the leaf has to be supplied to all the parts of the plant so in order to supply it to all the parts of the plant there where we got this specialized cells called as phloem cells is it clear it is very very simple you just have to say it com comes in four different types sieve plate sieve tube companion cells and the phloem tubes these are the four things which you have to have in mind in this just have the sieve plate sieve tube companion cell which is very very important companion cells are adjacent cells which are present in the phloem see for this phloem explanation or very clear explanation just go and watch my video where we have discussed a lot about this phloem cell before okay with a very clean detailed diagram and explanation it has been done just scroll down in the description you will get details about the xylem and phloem i guess this information will be more enough good enough if you want more please scroll down clear thank you thanks for your question so where was i yes i was telling about this active loading which is the first step right so active loading is a step where the starch molecules are 
removed from the leaf cell to the phloem cell. All right. So this phloem cell spends some energy. So that is why it is called as a active loading. So what sort of energy it produces? I mean, like it spends. So active means sorry, energy is produced in the form of ATP. Okay. So that particular ATP is produced, or that particular ATP is used to for this particular loading of cells. Sorry, loading of starch. Okay. So now I am just omitting the companion cells. Okay, the companion cells are here. So from here the starch moves into this. Active loading happens. And then how is this active loading moving? By producing or by some energy. So now the concentration here is too much. Concentration of what is too much? Concentration of sugar is too much. Glucose is too much basically. So in order to maintain equilibrium, what will happen? This has to go back. But this phloem cell is not going to allow because it has spent energy. So for that case only, this xylem is adjacent to it. This water will move towards it. Is it clear? So first step is this one where active loading happens. Second step is osmosis where water from the xylem moves towards the phloem. Okay. So now the equilibrium I mean like water will be keep on flowing until the concentration is maintained there. So once after the concentration is maintained, what will happen? This entire chamber will move down towards a root. Because root is where, let's say like root is a carrot, there's a carrot plant where the food storage is happening in the roots. Okay, so now this entire uh, flow, I mean like the entire substance has to move down towards the root. How is it moving? Is only the sap moving? No, the entire bulk is moving. Just imagine this to be a train. The first class compartment, second class compartment, let's say. So this is the first one compartment. First class compartment. So this compartment is moving together. The entire bulk is flowing down. So this is called as a bulk flow, which means it is moving down. Third step. So once it is reaching the root cells here, what will happen? Root cells only require it, right? So the process of unloading happens, which means all the starch is put to this root cells there. So this is a fourth step, which is unloading. So after unloading here, the water is again based. Because all the starch has gone there. So what will this water do here? It will go back to the xylem there. And this is a fifth step which we call this to be osmosis. Is that clear? Done? Okay. Good. So these are the five different, uh, five different steps which is happening in the translocation of the food. Active loading, osmosis, bulk flow, unloading and osmosis again. High mission, what about sieve elements? Sieve elements, nahi. it is called as a sieve plate. Sieve plate and sieve tube, we say. Sieve plate means, see, you can see a lot of holes, right? For all this bulk movement to happen or all this osmosis to happen, loading to happen, or especially this bulk flow to happen, it should have some perforation in the cell wall. <coughs> and as they are plant cells, each and every cell will have a very strong cell wall. So in that cell wall, as the plant is maturing, as it is getting transformed into a phloem cell, the sieve tubes or the sieve plates will automatically, it will start generating there. Is it clear? So those sieve plates help in this movement of the bulk flow. Is it clear, mission? Thank you so much for your question. So next. Hmm. Okay. So in this transportation, transportation in human, you just have to have heart in mind. And you just have to have this blood in mind and how this double circulation is happening. So that is a major thing which you have to have in mind. And when we are talking about this translocation in plants, xylem and phloem, you just have to have in mind. All right. So what is xylem and what is phloem? How is the translocation happening? All the five different steps is what you should have in mind. So last one, excretion. What is excretion? Excretion is a process where the waste stage gets excreted out of a body. What it, let it be a plant, let it be an animal, excretion must happen from the lower order organism. Lower order organism means the single celled amoeba to the highly complex organism so far known as human. So till us, all this process has to go in a procedure. As per the procedure it should go, it should have a very clean process. Is it clear? So likewise, we have this excretion also, the last process. So, removal of harmful waste from the body is called as excretion. Is it clear? Now, excretion in human. Very, very simple. When we are talking about this excretion in human, 
this is a excretory system okay so in this excretory system you have a pair of kidneys left kidney right kidney okay you have a pair of kidney and then you have this ureter correct and then you have a urinary bladder and then urethra which is through which like it gets expelled so now when we are looking at the kidney kidneys are like a bean shaped organs which are present in the lower abdomen of an in abdomen of a human all right which helps in purification of the blood which means it takes the urea content it takes the excess water from the blood and it expels out of the system is that clear so for that this uh, entire kidney gets the direct supply from the heart so certain major organs are there which will get the direct supply from the heart the blood i am talking about the brain kidneys lungs all these are very very important organ so here can you see these two very thick uh, blood vessels <coughs> excuse me one is a renal artery and other is a renal vein so here you can see this word renal so renal is something which refers to kidneys always is that clear as i said lungs means it will refer to the pulmonary heart means it will refer to cardiac so here renal means it's something which will refer to kidneys is it clear so in kidneys what is some, that something which have which helps in this excretion nephron okay nephron is a functional and structural unit of a kidney is that clear so when we are talking about the structural and functional unit of a kidney nephron each and every single rep nephron is something uh, which makes the entire process happen all right so here uh, we'll just make it like this so in kidney you have two different region one is a medulla region sorry yes so one is a medulla region and another is a cortex cortex region is the outer wall in the kidney medulla is the inner region all right so when we are talking about a kidney like this when you are cutting opening kidney it will be like this see about kidneys also we have discussed very in a detailed diagram we have discussed okay so do watch that session so this is a cortex and this is a medulla clear okay so now so when we are talking about this nephron see these are the parts of a nephron here so here when you see this particular area this is called as a bowman's capsule so inside the bowman's capsule you have a lot of uh, tube like structures so that tube like structure is called as a glomerulus so those tube like structures are or uh, uh, given or supplied with a lot of or a uh, lot of blood okay or we can say like blood capillaries are continuously are surrounding this glomerulus where the from the blood only or from the particular blood capillaries only they will absorb the blood sorry they will absorb the water is it clear excess water all the water they will absorb okay so this is from the artery capillary of the artery okay so they are absorbing once they are absorbing what will happen it will move to this particular region here prefrontal cortex okay so here it will just uh, not a prefrontal cortex it will just move to move to this particular region here so here is a tubular part of the nephron here so here where the absorption complete absorption of or the we can say like the segregation of urea segregation of water takes place here so as it is taking place it will come slowly to this particular uh, loop henry's loop we'll say this one i'll write like hl so it is a henry's loop or we can say like loop of henry whichever is comfortable we can write both are same only so in this henry's loop only all this segregation happens so once a segregation happens what will happen can you see here the arteries and the are converting into veins here which means like here you have all these capillaries so where in which one second okay so all here where this arteries they'll contain right so here where the liquid is there where it is the liquid ah, here the liquid is there which liquid the water salts urea okay let's say like water and salts let's say so this water and salts are present here so once it is present here from here again it is into the it is in the medulla region of the kidney and in the medulla region it is completely continuously or supplied with the blood capillaries there where the arteries will go around it they'll be con they'll be consuming the blood uh, water again from the loop or from this particular pathway why are they consuming or why are they taking back the water because 
water content in the blood shouldn't drop down. So what is the water content in the blood? It is nothing but the plasma. So if the plasma content is less than 45% in the blood, blood will become thicker, which will result in certain diseases like stroke. So blood shouldn't be much, much thicker. It should, and again, it shouldn't be much thinner also. It should have its own composition. So here, again, I'll tell you, blood enters here, glomerulus, there where absorption of a lot of water takes place. All water or maximum water gets absorbed and purification happens here. Purification means where the water from the water, the excess salts are removed. So once the salt is removed and along with some water, this water has to go back or this particular plasma has to go back to the blood there. So that particular blood or that particular water goes back to the blood in this region called as a Henle's loop. Once it is done, it will again go back to this particular area or the when only the salts with less amount of water, it will get expelled here. Okay, so this is a collecting tube. A lot of numerous collecting tubes combines together and it forms into this, uh, this tube. Okay, this left ureter or the right ureter, whatever. So it forms into this ureter here. Okay, all the collecting tubes comes together and forms here. Is this clear again? Hmm? Clear? Henry's loop is clear? And all this tubular part of the nephron is also clear? Simple, right? So it absorbs a lot of water and from the <clears throat> in the water it separates the salt so that is the main process or main process that is happening in the nephron it absorbs the salt first sorry water first and from the water it takes the or separates the salts ure urea it separates and also some water it separates and it gets collected in the collecting duct and from the collecting duct it goes towards or combines together in the renal uh, sorry in the ureter and from the ureter it gets stored in the urinary bladder and after some time, it gets expelled out of the body. Is this clear? Excretion in human. So now, excretion in plants. So excretion in plants, when we are talking about, we can say like um, oxygen and carbon dioxide is also excreted from the plant. But we don't, that's a gaseous exchange, right? Again, it happens. It's a circulation process. So we don't exactly say this uh, gaseous exchange, which is the oxygen and carbon dioxide to be a product of excretion. But what else is excreted? Water is also excreted in the form of transpiration. And what else is excreted? See, sometimes when you see the plants, you will see this resins you see. All right. Or you will see this uh, latex you will see. Or the gums, the rubber you see. Or some sort of gums you see. Correct? When in the stem especially, when you normally, when we scratch it, in normal, in drumstick tree also you can see lot of gums will be secreted, raisins will be, resins will be secreted. This badam tree is resin, all it's good for health. So all these are the excretory products which is getting excreted from the plants. And some are getting excreted, the minerals which is excess minerals which a plant is ha having will get excreted in the soil itself. Is it clear with the excretion in plants? Excretion in plants is very, very less. You just have to have in mind the gums, resins and rubber lattice which gets excreted. And when we are talking about the gaseous exchange, oxygen you can take, carbon dioxide you can say, and water exchange, water normally in the process of transpiration, let's see. Is it clear? So in this chapter, only four major things, nutrition, respiration, transportation, and you have this excretion. So these are the four major processes that helps to sustain life or we can say like life processes with which we are completing the one shot revision for this life processes lesson your chapter number six okay so this uh, chapter is for both or this revision is for both the cbc students and the state syllabus students see if you find this session to be very very fast enough you have the bifurcation where we have discussed chapter wise or topic wise we have discussed in elaborate sessions where you can go back watch their sessions there if you have doubts please come back to me all right and uh, until uh, next session we'll be discussing about the control and coordination is it clear the one, same one shot revision for control and coordination so be prepared stay healthy eat healthy stay healthy and uh, do this revision again and again multiple times so that it gets registered in your mind so that you don't get panic you can don't get emotional during your exams is that clear so unless and until i meet you in my next session this is lavanya longovan signing off from b learning bye bye take care